Okay, so we are gonna be doing a lab in class today. Now, if you are a remote learner, it makes it slightly difficult. So I'm running the lab for you and you can copy my data down and then you can draw your own conclusions from my data. So what we're gonna be doing today, guys, is just like in class, we've been going over diffusion and osmosis and today's lab is going to be on osmosis. So what I have here is I have four different solutions and they all have different amounts of sucrose in them. Now, if you recall from chapter three, sucrose is a disaccharide. It's made up of two monosaccharides, it's made up of glucose and fructose chemically bonded together. Now, the monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, they're small polar molecules. When we get to a disaccharide like sucrose, it gets a little bit bigger. And if it were, uh, like the cell membrane and stuff like that, it's hard for it to get through the cell membrane because it's so big. So what we're going to do here is we are going to simulate the cell. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use this thing, which is called dialysis tubing. And I know it's kind of hard to see here, but that's dialysis tubing. All right, I will show you what it does. I know it probably looks like uh, saran wrap or something like that right now, but it will actually turn into a tube here momentarily. What I do with my solutions is I have three different solutions here. We talked about them being sucrose. And then this one over here, this red one is going to be my stock solution. So that stock solution is going to have the same concentration of sucrose as one of these three. We don't know which one, that's the goal with labs to figure out which one it has the same concentration as. In other words, we will find out which one it is isotonic to. We will also find out which one of these it's hypotonic to, which one of them it's hypertonic to. We don't know, okay? So one of them it'll be isotonic, one of them it'll be hypertonic, one of them it'll be hypotonic, all right? And again, we're using our dialysis tubing to figure that out. So our first step is let's get the dialysis tubing set up. So here's my dialysis tubing. I'm going to use some water to get it set up. And what you do first is just dip the whole thing in the water. Okay. Now it is a tube, it's open at both ends. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie the first end off. I'm just gonna make a circle, put the end through the circle, and then pull it through. Okay, make a nice tight knot there. With the other end, so I got one end tied now, with the other end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna massage the end a little bit. And what that'll do is that'll open up our tubing. It is slightly difficult to get open. There is no easy way to do this. There it goes, starting to open there. Okay. So now we have the tubing nice and open. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm going to fill the dialysis tubing with each one of our three solutions. Now, I have three different dialysis tubings here, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill each one with a different solution. So, I have a little graduated cylinder here. I'm gonna start with the yellow. And the procedure calls for about six milliliters. All right, reading from the bottom of the meniscus, that looks to be about six. And I'm gonna take my dialysis tubing here and put the solution into the dialysis tubing. Okay. You guys can see the knot at the bottom. Let me show how many excess in here. The knot at the bottom worked pretty well. I'm going to get all of my excess air out as much as I can. Right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie the other end. So make a knot there. And there it is, okay? Next thing you guys wanna do, I don't want all this excess because we're gonna weigh these in a minute. I don't want all this excess. So on the outside of the knots, 
I'm just gonna cut off the excess. And now I have my first little, I guess, bubble almost of my yellow solution. What this dialysis tubing is, guys, is it's going to, again, act as a cell. So we have liquid inside the cell, and that outside, the tubing, will act like the cell membrane. So I will be back in a minute. I'm going to do the other two, so you don't have to watch me do the other two. And um, I'll be back and show you our next steps. Okay, so I made our three dialysis tubings. I have the yellow one here, the green one, and the blue one. Each of them I put about six milliliters of water in. Doesn't really matter um, if they're a little bit different because one of them is going to be isotonic, one of them is going to be hyper, and the other one's going to be hypotonic. It'll be pretty easy to tell which one uh, gained, lost, and pretty much stayed the same. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my pre-weight of each one, so my original weight. So I'm going to come over here, have our little balance here. So I'm going to start with our yellow. And in the lab directions, it said rounded the nearest hundredth, so I'm going to say it's 6.33. Three. We'll come over here. We're going to call yellow dialysis tubing number one. All right, so our original mass, 6.33 grams. Okay. Take that one off. We will get the green one next. And that looks like 6.4, if we round it, 9, 6.49. And that was our green one. It means our last one will obviously be blue. Let's grab the blue one. And that's about 6.77. 6.77. Okay, so there is your pre-data. Um, original observations, obviously the yellow one, um, it is yellow, okay? You can talk about the tubing if you want. There is a little bit of, I guess you could say give in it. Um, it's slightly pliable. It's not very, the liquid is not very firm against the outside. Same thing with the green. The liquid is not very firm against the outside. And obviously that's green in color. And our last one, the blue, all right? Same thing, the liquid is not very firm. Um, that might change after osmosis has occurred, okay? So our next step, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to get three beakers So there are our three beakers there. I'm going to use these beakers and we are going to then use our stock solution. We're going to fill each one to about 100 milliliters. It honestly does not matter if you're a little bit under or a little bit over. It's not a big deal as long as your dialysis tubing has a stock solution all around it. In other words, you don't want so little amount that the dialysis tubing uh, is touching the bottom or anything like that, okay? After that, next step, all we're gonna do, put your dialysis tubing in each stock solution, okay? If you are uh, in person, we will actually label these so we know which one's the yellow, which one's the green, which one's the blue in case we have any color changes afterwards but we're gonna let them sit in there overnight. We're gonna let osmosis take effect and we will come back tomorrow and find the post lab observations in the mass. All right guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay guys, we are back. I let our dialysis tubing sit overnight and now we are going to record our final masses and also our final observations. So let me pull them out of each one. Here's our yellow. There's our green. 
And lastly, there is our blue. Okay, so before we can take our final weights, there's one thing we have to do in order to make sure that our results are as good as they possibly can be. So if you notice on the outside of this, since they've been soaked in the stock solution overnight, they're, they're very wet. And we do not want that to contribute to our final mass because we didn't have that wetness on the outside when we started the experiment. Um, in other words, when we took our pre-mass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry this off a little bit. And also, the other thing I wanna do is the outside around the knots, I'm also gonna squeeze those knots a little bit to try to get as much solution, stock solution, out of them as I can. And what I'm doing is just trying to deter any experimental air based on the stock solution being in any part of that. Okay, so the yellow one looks good. Do the green one here. Get all the solution out of the knots there. Okay, green one's good. And lastly, the blue one. And again, guys, we just, we didn't have that uh, liquid on the outside before, so we do not want it after, right? Okay, so after we do that, we can now once again get our weights. I'll start with the yellow since we started with the yellow last time. Okay, so yellow, if we round it, I get 4.87 as my final. So obviously for that one, we went down a good bit actually. Let's get our green one next. Green one, 6.12. All right, so 6.12 grams for the green. And then lastly, put the blue on there. Okay. And we're looking like 8.06. So there is your final mass for each one, guys. Okay. Your next thing is going to be to determine which one was hyper, which one was hypo, and which one was isotonic. Are they gonna be perfect? No, but I'm telling you one is hyper, one is hypo, and one is iso, all right? And given these numbers, you gotta kinda use which one's closest to it to determine which one is which. Um, final observations, okay. This yellow one, it is definitely smaller than before. And if you also notice, it is not as yellow as it once was. It's almost like a hay or a light orange color um, compared to what it was initially. The green one, um, I don't see much of a color change. It's still, the, the baggie, the dialysis tubing is still slightly like loose. It's not very taut around the outside, the water. And the blue one, the blue one has definitely gotten bigger. Um, the liquid is, is more pressing against the walls. It feels like almost like a filled balloon. Uh, but again, no, no big color change there. Okay, so, oops, lights went out. Sorry guys, give me one second here. Okay, there we go. All right, so you guys can go ahead um, Fill out your final observations there. You can do your post-lab questions. There's one on that page, and then there's two on the next page. Now, for number three, you do not have to draw a picture. Just describe what the pictures would look like. In other words, where would there be more solute, either in the dialysis tubing or in the solution, okay? When you are submitting these on Canvas, you do not have to fill this lab report out, okay? What you can do is do your pre-lab questions as a text entry box. 
you can write this da data table out guys just like write yellow and then put your stuff like right in a lot of sentence form um, the green same thing the blue same thing and then do your post lab uh, questions <clears throat> again same text entry box and just submit them like that it won't be as much work on you guys it'll be a lot shorter um, and you won't have to edit this document so we won't have to use cami because we've been running into so many issues uh, with cami okay if you guys have any questions let me know have a good day